Hello everyone, Robert Saunders here, and today we're going to do another video series. We're going to talk about, this time, onboarding Power Store. Why do we do that? Why do we have this as part of the platform? Well, we get that flexibility of three-tier and the simplicity of HCI all together, all as part of this, call it, disaggregated um, type of topology that we have here, and it works wonderful for a lot of our customers. So let's take a look here, see how we onboard Power Store storage. You see I'm in the portal here. I have a couple choices up there, add assets. I'm going to add a storage asset. You see I already have one there connected, but we're going to go through and I'm going to show you some tagging here in a second too. So it's very easy to do this with Power Store. I either can add by IP or FQDN. I'm going to do an IP. The port will be 443. I can give it a description if I would like, and then the username and password and onboard. It'll go off hit the API set uh, at PowerStore, and then pull itself into the portal here. Now, it's interesting, you see that global identifier right there that initially kind of stands up with as it's onboarding. That is the global identifier from PowerStore, and then the name that's going to be shown here in the portal is the name of your PowerStore. Interesting, interestingly enough, we have a few different lab environments, but we call all the power stores inside these separate little autonomous labs, power store hyphen zero one. So you're gonna see the same name here, but what I'm gonna do also is add some tagging, which really shows the power of the automation platform. So now it's onboarded. I see two that are both called the same thing there. That's great. I see that uh, service tag there, that serial number on the right, that's that global identifier that's being presented back here to the portal from the power store. Now I'll go over to the orchestrator, infrastructure, and I will filter actually on, what I can do here is I can filter up on storage tab right there, and I just filter on just the two power stores. You can see that the OS versions there, a few different builds, few different, uh, 4010, 4001, another video coming here, and the next in the series is gonna show, show how to do upgrades or lifecycle management for your power store from the orchestrator, pretty cool. So I actually want to do, well, I can see my environment specific details there, but what I really want to do is when I look at these, I want to be able to filter by tags. So I'm going to use the tags here that we have built in really to any part of the orchestrator. You can tag whatever you want. So I'm going to give it a key value pair. I'm going to call it ENB for environment and then 96.dapdemo.lab and then I have another one there. I'm going to do the same thing. So if I'm going to call that zero, those are two different subnets that we have. So now over there on the right, I have tagging. I can use that to filter. I can use that to build rules inside the orchestrator. I can do a lot of different things as long as I have everything tagged correctly, even though those names may be the same. That's perfectly fine. Doesn't matter to the orchestrator at all. <clears throat> so then I can see if I want to add some columns here, I can pull in the tagging there. So now I pulled it in so I can also do some further refinement or discovery or however I'd like, especially if I have a lot of different power stores in the environment. Super easy. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it, everyone. Have a great day.